Welcome food fans, picky eaters, the flavor curious, and everyone in between. Nothing makes good food better than good conversation. And your table is ready. Welcome back to another episode of the Food for Thought Cast with your hosts, Melissa Reagan and Steven Gonzalez. But you can call them chef. All right, let's get this episode started. Hey there, food fans. Welcome back to the Food for Thought cast with me, your host, Melissa Reagan, and my co-host with the most, Chef Steven Gonzalez. What's up, buddy? Hi. 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 (laughs) So exciting. I don't remember where I got that from, but I think it's the best thing ever. Steve and I haven't seen each other in a week-ish. It's been about a week, Um, yeah. Yeah. Which feels like an eternity. Like an eternity away from you. (laughs) <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Uh, how was your week dude it was good productive uh yeah can't complain what about you yeah it was work 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 um and some more work followed by travel um now refresh yeah. me you traveled to chicago the windy city the windy city not much wind there actually a lot more humid than i thought it would be um, because of all the tall buildings, that's why it blocks all the wind. Eh, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Um, did you go eat at L Ideas? I did not. <laughs> ah, bucket yeah. list, still bucket list. Bucket list, bucket list. So on Steve's yeah. bucket list, L Ideas in Chicago. Um, they just they they didn't offer any tastings that weren't at night, and I I worked every night while I was there. So. Yeah, womp, womp. Womp. that happens to be every time womp. I go to Chicago too. So womp womp. Yeah. Um. But what'd you eat over there? Yeah. Okay. So. We'll, we'll jump right in to the most amazing thing I ate this week was. I always forget that part. I always forget that. What's the most. I just jump right into what you eat. No, we're doing it. Like, let's go. No, it's fine. It's fine. I like it. I like it. Um, I texted Steve. I was like, hey, guess what I'm going to eat? And he was like, what? And I was like, I'm going to go to a place called Chicago Q. And apparently it is Savannah style slash inspired barbecue. So. It was, I don't even, I don't know about Savannah, but they did have Carolina style, like mustard barbecue sauce. So, um, look, the brisket, it's a perfect amount of bark and fat. It was really, really moist. Uh, I got a flight of barbecue meats. So I got pulled chicken, which was really, really great. The pulled pork was a little bit fatty and I, I told him to in person. I was like, hey, it could have just been this piece that I got, but like, eh, it's a little bit fatty. I like the bark on pulled pork as well. Um, and the brisket. And then they brought a trio of sauces. Um, one was their spicy, which had a good amount of cayenne in it. And it was really, really good. One was their Carolina, which was the perfect balance of acid, sugar, and mustard. Um, and one was their house sauce that I was like, I was like, what, what is there's bacon grease in here. And she was like, yep. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yes. Let's go. So I would yeah. have never thought of adding that. That's it was awesome. It was just it was that little something where I was like, it just kept tasting it with the meat. It's like, what is what is this? Leave um, it up to someone brilliant from Chicago. Seriously. To incorporate bacon fat into uh the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Chicago Q uh is the name of the joint. And I was telling Steve right before we got on that Meat Church out of Texas um follows them on Instagram. If Meat Church is following you, it's either because you're doing something right or they're hate following you. This is only like two reasons, but um, their beans were really good too. The beans had uh, really huge cubes of like um, salt pork in them and they weren't too sweet. They had like a nice mustardy tang in the background. Uh, I had a little cast iron skillet of those. Um, They had homemade chips, which were really great and um, homemade pickles. And I thought like, I was like, why are they bringing me this huge bowl of pickles? Like I don't understand. And um, I bit into one and it was a sweet pickle. And I was like kind of disappointed. (laughs) <laughs> because it didn't have all the stuff on it. So like, I couldn't tell it was a bread and butter. Like it didn't have all the little, yeah, the little floaties. Steve, I ate 
half a cereal size bowl of their sweet pickles because they were just sour enough to not be yes. like gross. Um, and then as an appetizer, I got fried green tomatoes with habanero ranch. And those were also legit. <laughs> so, oh man, that sounds good. Yeah. I ate three or four bites of everything and then packed it up um, to go. And that's a real Testament. If your food is good, cold the next day out of your hotel mini fridge. Then... <laughs> yeah. 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 It was really, really great. <laughs> so what Agreed. about you? What'd you eat? What'd you uh, eat last week? We did a pulled pork um, and we had friends over. So, of course, it was like the pool, the traditional pulled pork uh, mm -hmm. sliders with your coleslaw. And and I took it a step further because like I just am a glutton. So I put like the we, we had queso and I put that over like the pulled pork and the coleslaw and chips in there and just yes. crushed it all down. Kind of like a every kitchen sink type of a slider. Mm -hmm. And it was good. Like yeah, it. so I good. My thing with like sliders is I just want all the different textures. So like I'm a huge fan of like coleslaw on a burger or sandwich or uh -huh. a slaw or, a, you know, any kind of like, I like a crunchy, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, you got to have really toasted so good. bread for some reason. Like, I mean, like the slider rolls are good, but when they're really toasted, oh, with mayo, dude, forget about it. Yeah really really delicious um you get that little soft and then it's like crunchy and crusty and so uh, so here's the funny part is we um I, I didn't have any kind of like broth or stock or anything at the house so i cooked it down with like uh tomatoes i threw a bunch of bell pepper like pieces in there uh garlic and water and mm -hmm. oh and then i had like this um green chili or like hatch chili like cooking sauce yeah and oh my gosh for not using like your traditional like stocks and stuff like that it still came out amazing you know yeah. i'm just yeah. so conditioned to always using stocks and yeah i couldn't complain at all <laughs> i was very proud of myself i have to give an i have to give an update about um you know we talked charcuterie uh it was my it was my one of my only options pretty late at night um, in the hotel bar was a charcuterie board. And I'm proud to report that it had no lunch meat. It had beautiful mortadella, capicola, salami, prosciutto, um, a really nice stinky blue cheese. It's really great, like sharp English cheddar. Um, I got a Caesar salad and I was like, eh, the Caesar salad kind of tastes like the, the dressing is pre-made. However, they really redeemed it with the most perfectly cooked six minute egg, I, like cut in oh, half nice. and like seasoned. I was like, yes, <laughs> this <laughs> is awesome. Hey, I have to give a little bit of a shout out, Steve. I saw, I, I met a man that had bought a condo across the street from the hotel I was staying in. Uh -huh. He was, he was having a drink at the bar. Um, come to find out this guy has an Instagram that is never too old to cook. So he's at never too old to cook. He is the most delightful gentleman. So both of the twos are the number two. So it's like never mm -hmm. number two old, number two cook. Um, he's the most delightful man. He didn't actually start getting into cooking until he was in his 70s. He photographs wow. everything. He started blogging it. And he does a really nice job. And it's just a super passionate individual that um, really loves to cook and has really figured a lot of things out. So he's kind of a self-proclaimed foodie. Um, Really, really nice guy who it turns out um, either used to be used to live in Dallas or used to be from Dallas. So super small world. Right. And yeah. uh, what well, he turned around and followed the podcast on Instagram. So if anybody out there is interested, go give him a follow. Um, he's always cooking something really amazing. So, Heck yeah, really, really, really nice guy. You can find nice folks everywhere. Um, man, such a small world. So, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So was, what you're saying is he'll be joining us as a guest one day. I mean, I'm just saying it's easy pickings. Like, I'm just saying it wouldn't be terrible to have him as a guest. But um, really nice guy, really cooked some awesome things. And it is never too late to start cooking or never too late to get into food. So, Yeah, agreed. Yeah, and you don't have to be perfect at it either. <laughs> so That's the best part. As long uh, as it tastes yeah. good, it's all that matters. As long as it tastes good and you like it, that's really all that matters. Well, I mean, I guess it, it depends on who you're asking. Because then, like, 
you get some of those debates going kind of back and forth. Like, is it sure. too late? No, it's never too late. And you have some yeah. people who start like this uh, gentleman in their yep. 70s. And if mm -hmm. they put up a good meal, then heck yeah. But then you have some people who are like, no, that's too late. And, you know, like, again. Yeah, or when somebody is like, oh, you didn't make this the way that I make it, so it's wrong. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So everyone's got, like, their own uh mm -hmm. position on stuff like that mm -hmm. and at least and you know it can be anything that people debate about nowadays because everyone just like wants to fight or debate <laughs> I, for reason, to you know? I just want to eat to be honest yeah i just so want to then eat and listen this. to podcasts so then what are we <laughs> what are we debating today i don't know i think steve has the list and he's being coy at the moment <laughs> well that was kind of like my segue <laughs> into it you know so like debates it. always happen and people uh, like yeah. you said if it's not done their way it's wrong but then you have true foodies who are always open to embrace they see both sides and they're good with both and yes. so you know well look all over the city right in chicago people are like oh have you had the pizza have you had the pizza i'm like yes i've had both of the kinds of pizza and i don't like them okay <laughs> and you pissed that's, off a lot of people that's it i mean you know they were like yeah to each his own but i was like i Hey, I'm good on pizza. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. Speaking of pizza, yeah, pizza. Here's a very big debate. Do you fold it or do you palm it? Fold. What's the right way? I fold it. I fold it too, you know. I can't just like have a flat piece of pizza and try to like get it. It's just best to fold it. So did somebody like in your childhood say this is the way you eat pizza or like when do you do you know when it came about that you started doing that? Did you model uh, it after somebody? I modeled it after watching Ninja Turtles the movies because yeah. they would fold it that way. <laughs> and especially if you have like a really big piece of a wide piece of pizza, yeah. you can't yeah, you can't just leave it flat. That's tough. And you don't eat it with a fork and knife. Unless it's Absolutely like Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. Just... That's another argument for why deep dish is wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless you got time to to sit down and eat, then you can heat, keep it flat. But otherwise, no, it's I, folded. I couldn't tell you. I know that I didn't grow up folding my pizza in half. Um, I can't tell you at what point I started doing it, but it's almost like it's one of those like, did I always do it this way, or was there actually some point where I changed my habit but now it's just so much a part of the way that i eat it that i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you when or where or why um yeah. it just seems easier it holds the grease in i don't know well yeah like in some movies they leave it they leave it uh flat oh and, and then it's like one of these yeah it's exactly me, dude. like i'm like stop stop you're gonna get on your shirt but people like you how to eat? people feel like if you fold it you lose tasting your toppings you know what I'm saying? So, like, because it's just sandwiched <laughs> between cheese and sauce and bread. So well, you don't get, like, the flavor of the pepperoni or the mushroom or whatever your topping you got. There's two practical responses I have to this. First of all, I actually fold a lot of things that I eat because it, it kind of feels like a taco. And I like tacos a lot. Uh, and then secondly, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like folding it keeps me from burning the roof of my mouth on the toppings. I... I feel like folding it and then just shoveling it into my mouth helps me get fuller faster. But that's not really, that's not really. I mean, case, it is know? also ease of access. Like you can eat pizza a lot faster if you fold it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. So there's some pizza Speaking that deserves which, to be like savored. And then there's some pizza that you're like, let me just crush like 10 slices of this because it's true. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> so since we're still on the topic of pizza, pineapple. Is it a pizza topping or is it a trash fruit? I, you already know my answer. I love pineapple and pizza because I like sweet and sour. I don't mind it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind it either. Um, I know a lot of people get upset when you uh, mention pineapple and pizza. Like, no, it doesn't go, you know? Um, even Gordon Ramsay once tweeted, like, pineapple does not belong on pizza. Yep. Um Anthony Bourdain, have you seen this shit? Pineapple or Hawaiian pizza? I cannot effing believe it. <laughs> so those are two know. unpopular and wrong opinions. That's the thing that I feel like is, it depends on where you grew up. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, 
or how you, know. you grew up, you know, like my parents didn't have any designs on what pizza was supposed to be. Not when I was little. It was pizza yeah. was easy and fast. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, you know, some people just feel like pineapple just should either be eaten raw or in an upside down cake. But yeah, I'm, I'm all, I don't mind it. I don't mind it one bit. Yeah, I, I don't mind either. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. I feel like if you're going to do it, caramelize the pineapple chunks with just a little bit of sugar, maybe some bacon fat. And that helps it out quite a bit, too. I know we've never discussed that, but that was something that when you were talking about, like, your uh, bacon fat and the barbecue mm -hmm. sauce, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, bacon fat with pineapple doesn't sound bad either. I don't so think you're... bacon grease or meat drippings ever made anything worse be honest right exactly <laughs> i mean it's you put ham and pineapple together for uh like thanksgiving so why not have a caramelized pineapple Dude, on the, your pizza one of the things i love to do in a crock pot is like a coke a can of pineapple rings and you know you can do like a, a little splish splash of like rum i would never have that in the house it's nothing against it i just don't drink it um, but you could do, you could really do anything that's just going to give it the depth of flavor. But yeah, like the sugar, or you could just even do brown sugar. And I know people that do the glaze is like brown sugar, pineapple, and cherries on ham. It's it's not like an unheard of combination. You know what I mean? Ham and pineapple. Yeah. So like somebody just put on a pizza. Everybody calm down. Let the people eat what they like. Otherwise, you're just forcing your opinion on other people. And that's just wrong. <laughs> you know what? I like pineapple on pepperoni pizza too. And I like pineapple with jalapenos on pizza. So minus yeah. the jalapeno, I could do it. <laughs> okay. So next one, milkshake and fries. Do you dip or not? Yes, I did. I, I don't. <laughs> Would Why? you though? Have you tried it though? I've, I've done it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Why do you dip? Because salty sweet. Always. I guess. Salty sweet's my homeostasis, man. Like, I'm always seeking it out. I mean, does, so let me ask you this. If, do, do your fries have to be really salty or just like plain old? They, kind of they need to be fries? like salty and really crispy. So that this, to me, is like the Wendy's fries with the Frosty. Like, that's a good combination. It's not just anywhere. McDonald's fries, they, they just need to be eaten hot and fresh. You know, like, I'm not dipping yeah. Because I'm sorry, but like McDonald's shakes suck. There's yeah. ice cream esque, you know, material. It's That's not true. Like, I don't know. That's Plus the selective. Like the salt, I would imagine, like enhances the flavor of whatever uh, flavor uh, shake you're having. You know, like whether it's chocolate, strawberry, something well, like that. I mean, did you ever watch Modern Family, Steve? I did at first, and then like I just got behind on it, and it was too late yeah. to catch up. I mean, I don't know. It's it's worth so, your time to finish it. It's a great series if you ever get the time. But so there, what happened with fries and shakes? Well, no, there's there's like a running gag in the show about salting your chocolate milk to bring out the flavor of the um, chocolate. And ever since then, I will take it a little bit further and a little bit further. I mean, people do it all the time, right? They now they put you they put salt on chocolate chip cookies and salt on salted caramel, and and salted caramel like, yeah. you know so yeah like you can you can do that but i i think that the salt from the fries would make a chocolate shake taste better truly i think so but the the hot fries and the cold milkshake i just also, can't do it though also yes <laughs> what i like it for all the reasons you hate it <laughs> i mean i've done it before. i'm gonna say is my computer acting up yeah, it's getting no, a little we're good. We get a little freezy, a little here and there. So well, you've done it. You've done it. What? Well, I mean, I've done it before, but I just don't prefer. It's not your dipping my fries in yeah. the shake. Not I think I'm not going to do like any flavor, right? Like I think there's a lot of standalone shake flavors that don't need the assistance of a hot French fry. I don't know. Okay. You I know, like if that. I go to like Steak and Shake, they and they they'll do like the side by sides, and you got like chocolate peach or. Vanilla strawberry. I'm not dipping fries in there. But if it's like a chocolate frosty at Wendy's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not dipping in and out fries in their shape. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm it's very particular. <laughs> yeah. 
what about okay so on to the next topic yes. notice how we're spending just a little bit on each one <laughs> what's the best way to do a pb and j oh for me it's creamy peanut butter and grape jelly so would you do you feel like it's peanut butter on one slice jelly on the other and then smash it together or do you think it's best to have peanut butter on both breads and then put, put jelly in the middle. I put peanut butter on both sides, but it depends on the bread. If I'm eating healthy fufu bread and the more I spread the peanut butter, the more it's going to damage the structural integrity, you know, like the CD OD kind, then I'm like, yeah. eh, I have to be like a little bit like strategic. But if it's like squishy good bread, yes, you need peanut butter on both sides to keep the jelly from moving around. What I about never you? thought about it like I, I've always just done like I one always side, over one side. I always one overthink side, it. <laughs> but I always have to have toasted bread too. So really? Yeah. Oh, you've oh, never man. had a PB and J with toasted bread? I've had Holy like crap. a like a skillet like peanut butter jelly banana situation. Okay. Like peanut butter Nutella. But that's when I want it warm on purpose. Typically it's just it's cold. Cold bread. I think I I think I got into that because of like, you know, when you get like the uh, frozen PB and J like sandwiches, and then mm -hmm. you just throw them in the fryer. Mm -hmm. Ever since I had that, I'm like, <laughs> I gotta have toast. I still haven't done it either. I I don't. It, this is not shade for uncrustables or carbs. It's just I like to try to make sure our bread's a whole grain, um, and they just yeah. don't. They're they're white bread. Mm -hmm. They're white. It's white bread. Um, I like white bread. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, but. I want to eat a whole bunch of it. So if I want to eat a whole bunch of something, I have to make sure it's kind of like the best balance of everything. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, 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 but I can't bring myself to put peanut butter on both sides. Cause I feel like then I'm only having peanut butter. Too much peanut butter. Yeah. Okay. So are you like grape jelly guy? Ooh, I could do grape jelly. I pro actually, I prefer raspberry preserves. So preserves like, with the seeds in it. Yeah. Oh, I don't nasty. know why. He's so nasty. What? Why don't you just drop your sandwich peanut butter side down on the ground? You can get all the crunchies you want. <laughs> so I'm, gross. <laughs> now that you mention it, I just might. Just go to the sandbox and do it that way. Um, I really like grape, but I will eat peanut butter with a lot of flavors of fruit jelly. But it's really, really good with apple butter. And you say I'm nasty. Come on. <laughs> do you not like apple butter at all? No, it's good. I don't mind no. it. No, you like I pumpkin to... though, right? You like pumpkin butter. So sure, yeah. Well, pumpkin butter, peanut butter, toasted sandwich in the fall. I mean, come on. Ooh. I might even mess with that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, <laughs> I think that's a good one too. Red what about plum. red plums? A good one to try, Steve. Ooh, I think Wait. I will. That's good. It's tart enough against the peanut butter. It's really good. It's good contrast. Ooh. Yeah. So. Well done steak, yay or nay. I already know what you're going to say. No. <laughs> no. Nay. I'm, I'm going to say nay, too. <laughs> does it matter if which cut it is for you? Does does the cut determine the temperature that you order? Let me no, everything's like mid-rare. Everything. Rare. No matter everything. the size, no matter care. the cut. Don't huh. care. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the best way... Honestly, and I was taught this at a younger age was it's got like medium is the perfect temperature because you're bringing out all the, enough flavor mm -hmm. and without cooking it out. So by overcooking yeah. your steak, well done, you're cooking out all that flavor. And then it's just a dry piece of leather. So some people feel like well done's the way to go. I mean, some people do it for cultural reasons. That's why they were raised. Or they believe certain things about the blood of the animal. Some people do it for religious reasons. Those things I totally respect. But the people that are doing it because they've never had it the other way or don't know better, I don't respect that. Go try it. The ones that say, like, I can't have anything under well done because then I'm going to get sick. You're going to make me sick. Those are the ones where I'm like, no. <laughs> you just, yeah, you're not living life. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's like we were talking to Chef Hawks when he was on about people believing the, the pork thing, about pork not being cooked well done. It's just silly. Yeah. <laughs> I, so whenever you're, you know, when you're at work and you have people who order like well done steaks and stuff like that, do you judge them or not really? No, not really. I, 
if you want to spend your money, that's fine. It makes the same money one way or the other, right? Like I'm that's just exactly like, what I say. I'm like, eh, that's cool. Now, the the thing that kills me though about that is when people go, "Well done, but not dry." GTFO on that, please stop. <laughs> please stop because well done is dry, and there's not another way around it. If you want well done meat that's moist, go get braised like a pot roast, a beef rib, you know, something like that. Like you know, fine. every time that I had a well done steak in my restaurant or ordered, I'm sorry, I I would uh before I would serve it while it was resting, I would throw like a little bit knob of butter on there to help. Yeah, so, sure. so the ones that were like, oh, I want it well done but not dry. That was my that was always my way around it, you know, and it helped every single yeah. time. Yeah. Unless they were like, you know, I can't have dairy and this and that. Then you're like, well, I can't help you. I you can't know? help you. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of things that butter can't fix. Let's just exactly. Be real. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be real. So, th- those are always tough. Of course, like I said, I like my steaks more on the rare side because that's just how I grew up. Yeah. No, I get that. I mean, there's a little, if it's like a super thick filet, um, I kind of, I want it closer to medium or like a medium rare plus because it's just, sometimes it can get, it can be cold in the middle and I don't enjoy that. I, yeah. there, there has to be some, something that discerns between a nice grilled steak or like seared um, or charred steak and like tartar. Uh, it can't veer too far to one or the other. Um, so, but yeah, if it's ribeye, mm, medium rare, for sure. I could see that, yeah. I, I don't do like the mid-rare plus minuses now. I'm like, eh, mid-rare is good, you know? <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I mean, they're really not real. I mean, you only got five degrees to play with if, yeah. you're, doing, if you're doing pluses. But I just, you know, I, I just order medium and I deal with the fact that it might be a little bit overcooked, but... It's just the texture yeah. of a filet for me. Now, I'm not ordering filet on a regular basis. Your girl do be having bills to pay. Um, <laughs> so if it's a lower end, like a sirloin, I think cooking in a little longer helps. You know what I mean? I guess. It's the Even a sirloin, I like it rare. Mid rare. Yeah. I like them thick, you know? I just want it hot on the inside, though. It's like they, they got to do it right. You know, like. <laughs> Yeah. You, gotta, you have to flash it before you send it out. Otherwise, it's like, uh, well, the outside's warm-ish and the inside's cold now. And if I don't have mashed potatoes to drag this through, then it's not enjoyable. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Next topic. What is Oreos. It? Do you split them or do you bite them? I split them. I, I twist them apart and then I lick all the frosting on one side and then I have two cookies to dunk. That's what I do. <laughs> It's like, scary because I do the exact same thing. <laughs> I'm just maximizing the time. <laughs> have you ever have you ever done it like where you don't eat where you don't uh split it, you just eat your Oreos as is? Sure, but I dip them in milk first. Okay, I can see that. It's quite possibly the only thing I've ever used cow milk for besides cereal, like on its own. Yeah. Have you seen the hack where you use a fork? to go in inside the Oreo and you dip it in the milk so you don't drop it. So you can dip the whole thing without giving your fingertips wet. I never yeah, it's such a thing. Pretty nifty. <laughs> pretty huh. Nifty. The only time I'll ever eat like Oreos like whole like that is if I have like the, the double stuffed ones and then mm-hmm. I'll take, you know, I'll do a double, double stuffed one and yes. then dip it in milk. And that's the way to do it. Ugh, Steve, There's no other way around Sorry. it. Oh um, no! Do you? It's fine. Do you have a favorite flavor? Do you like the flavored ones? They're good, but you, classic's always the way to go. Like the mint one's good. The peanut um, butter ones are really good. I I tried it. And I didn't care for it. I didn't really? hate it, but I didn't care for it. Um, what what is it? The double chocolate one or the chocolate fudge one? That one's pretty good. Birthday cake's good. The birthday They're cake all one really was good. Pretty good. I'm a sucker for a rainbow sprinkle. So anything birthday cake flavor, <laughs> I'm in. Like, yeah, yeah, I can remember uh, being a kid and opening them up and just kind of licking the frosting and dunking my cookies. And people, mm-hmm. I remember this one kid uh, gave me a, a dirty look like I was doing something wrong. And he goes, No, you're supposed to eat the cookie like that. That's how it is. And every, every time I eat an Oreo, I'm like, You're wrong. This guy. <laughs> yeah. 
you're kind of like giving yeah. the middle finger, but it's not the middle finger. It's like the other finger, you know, your ring yeah. finger. You're like, no. But I was actually going to try to do it really quickly to camera. And then I realized like, I'm going to mess it up. So I'm not going to. Yeah. You just got to shake your hand really fast. I can't because it doesn't, it doesn't, I can't get it to go up. I can do it with my left <laughs> hand, my right hand, not so much. And you're not flipping anyone off. I'm just you're just showing them your pretty fingers. I'm just gonna revert to the bad one because my joints won't do that. Won't <laughs> do it. Right. But the bird all day long can do. Um to nothing in particular. I think flipping off inanimate objects when I like stub my toe on them is really satisfying. Yeah. Just saying. Great. You're not hurting anybody. Um no. Oreos, anyway. Oreos. <laughs> so Moving anyway, along. screw that kid. He was yeah, wrong. Screw that you, kid. He you, eat sure. the, you eat the Oreos. How Rude. Like Rude. Yeah. I Rude. should have gotten detention. Rude. Yeah. So, <laughs> sandwiches. Do you sandwiches. cut them in half in rectangles or do you cut them in triangles? Corner to corner. Rectangles. What? Yeah. You're sick. You're it's sick. It's like I don't even know you anymore. It's like I don't even know you. Really? All your life? You rectangles? Like... Yes, because uh, I don't know. I just always done it that way. Because you don't even have a ring. Then. <laughs> Why do you cut them in triangles? Because you have more bite surface area. You it's more... the same size yeah. sandwich. It is not. It looks bigger. <laughs> You're still getting a, like one sandwich. <laughs> I mean, triangles look prettier, but I don't know. Rectangles? Like... Were you crust or not? Oh, I like crust. Yeah, me too. I don't mind it. Yeah, yeah. Well, because then you're taking off like more. That's just yeah. You're, you're losing calories. No, yeah. uh, uh. I want all my crust and all my oh, calories. All calories, all the crust. I feel like though, with with a a triangle, when you bite into it, you lose a little more filling if it's like chicken salad or something along those lines. Whereas with a rectangle, you don't. Chicken. It makes no sense whatsoever, but that's just how I think. Chicken salad. No, that makes sense to me because you can, you could maneuver it different. Um, chicken salad, I always want in a wrapper or croissant. The thing, I don't know. I can see that. Yeah, I'm never gonna make a chicken salad sandwich at home on regular square bread, ever. I don't know why. <laughs> don't ask me. I do. Yeah. With toasted bread. Yeah, toasted. See? Weirdo. So weird. I know. You're the one that has to have triangles. <laughs> You like to lose your filling, so triangles. You lose your filling. Think about it. You do a grilled cheese, you cut it in triangles, you'll lose a lot of that cheese. With the squares or rectangles, you don't. The, where am I losing it to, Stephen? Uh, out. the plate. The plate. Yes. yes. It's not disappearing into another plane of existence. Like it's not it's like, like slipping into a multiverse. It's <laughs> like when you you do you you clean your socks and you lose the left sock all the time. That's the same thing. It's the exact argument. Man, I don't know what's happening at your house, but <laughs> if anything falls out my sandwich, I'm going to pick it up and recover it. I mean, I don't have socks in my sandwiches, but still, like, it's just a, what? It's kind of like the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, you lose cheese by cutting it in triangles. I'm Heard. just saying. Okay, got it. Yes, chef. <laughs> We're about to start fighting. <laughs> We're going to start fighting over this. No, you're wrong, man. You're just wrong. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. This is a big one. And I think I know which way you're going to go. But if I'm wrong, then you're just wrong and weird. <clears throat> Spaghetti. Do you twirl it or do you cut it? I twirl it. Okay, good. Yeah. We can stay friends. Do you break the spaghetti when you put it in the pot? No. Yeah. I like the long noodles. Yeah. Because I twirl it. You get yeah. like a lot of But do you spaghetti. use a spoon to twirl it? Do you like no. twirl it against this? Yeah, see, I just, no. because I like... I felt I've always felt like that was too bougie for me, you know. I also don't eat spaghetti in front of other people for that reason. That and lo mein. It's not pretty. If nobody needs to see that. I I don't know. I think my I think my mom used to do it where she would twirl the spoon and or the fork and the spoon and all that. And I just didn't have that much coordination to do it. So fancy. So, so you just put it straight up and down and twirl, and next thing you know, you have a fork full of spaghetti and a mouth full of food. Yes. That's just how I do it. Correct. I'm meatballs or meat sauce way. or both? Meat sauce. Not meatball. If I get meatballs, then I cut it up into a bunch of little chunks and then I have meat sauce. So it's 
irrelevant. It's easier that way. I don't know why. Because <laughs> you get a little bit of meat with your pasta and your sauce and all that. It just makes sense to me. What yeah. about you? I I like a classic meat sauce, and I'm probably always going to add mushrooms to it. Like if I'm out. Oh, yeah. Totally. Okay. And olives and onions and garlic. It's a staple if you yeah. do it that way. Yeah. So do you call it a bolognese sauce, or is it like just a meat sauce? No, if I make it's just meat sauce. If I make bolognese at home, it's like real deal onion, carrot, celery, wine, cream, like real. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, maybe not cream. I don't know if that's like real deal or not, but I like it a little in mine. Yeah. So I could see yeah. that. I, I when I make bolognese, it's like you could just eat that. You're giving me the pasta. Leaves next. <laughs> the pasta's the added bonus. Yeah, for real. Yes. When you're twirling it Big with your fork. I, I can't understand like people who cut their pasta though, because then you it's harder to, to eat it, you know, because they're smaller noodles. You can't twirl it. And then yeah, you're trying it's to, hard to pick up. It. Yeah, you're balancing that. It's not I don't get it. But do you know what I really like with bolognese though? We're, What's we that? are so far off topic right now, but and now I'm getting hungry. Um <laughs> I like bolognese with the with ziti. Mm -hmm. And I put cheese on top and bake it. So I make go through like the traditional steps of bolognese. And then I put it like on the ziti in the, you know, casserole and put cheese on top. Interesting. So. You know, it, it's so. weird. So as much as I don't like zucchini and squash, if you throw a little bit of that into like your baked ziti, I'm all about it. I could do it. Dude, totally. if I'm it's so Depending on the time of the year, like if I'm in the mood for it, right? If I want those things in my spaghetti sauce, I use a cheese grater. Yeah. This is extra nutrition. So then the same. So then it's with... primavera. I don't know. What it's like. <laughs> I was going to say, so then the same argument goes for zoodles. Do you cut them up or do you twirl them? I don't eat zoodles. That's garbage. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Fair enough. They're just a watery I've... mess. I don't like it. Yeah, a little bit. But if I had just... to do them, I would do the beet zoodles. Just eat the pasta. Boodles? Boodles, yeah. Beetles? Boodles. Is that a thing? That's a thing? Beets, yeah. Wow. You have like your... Like a spiralizer? Your, your squash spiralizer. Zoodles. Does it, so does it bleed into everything? So like the whole a dish bit, ends yeah. up being... Yeah. Strange. It's okay. I like beets, so... You, use it, you could do it with the yellow ones. I bet it would stain those still. Probably look mm -hmm. like you've got a bunch of turmeric everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really adore beets. Okay, so there's this we're we're just going down the whole right now. You're good now. enough topic. So just I don't I don't even care. I don't care. I'm talking about food. It's never off topic. Okay. <laughs> you can rein it back in, in a minute. All right. Roast a beet, peel it, cool it down, peel it, make it into slices like um quarter inch thick, whipped cream cheese in the middle. So then two, so it looks like an Oreo, and then you roll the exposed side into crushed pistachios. I was going to say, so then do you open up your, your no, stop it. cookie shut up. with the cream cheese? <laughs> no, shut up. Uh, so, but yeah, it's like a beet cream cheese and pistachio sandwich, and it makes a really good cold order. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. Very nice. So, so anyway. do you go with the big beets or the small ones? Uh, the big ones. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That sounds good. A little balsamic drizzle. Oh. Gotta so, have it. Anyway, back next on. Next debate. <laughs> How do you say pecan? Is it? Um, pecans go in pies, and pecans if, are what truckers use when they can't find a bathroom. But what if you're, I mean, a lot of people from the South say pecan. They're wrong. It's a pecan pie. They're wrong. Pecan. Pecans are what truckers use when they can't find a bathroom. Pecan. What about Pecan. Pe no, it's pecan. terrible. Is it pecan? <laughs> no, it's pecan. Pe. pe. <laughs> We're going to be like, pe. 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 Pecan? No. Pe. Not pe. 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 I don't know, dude. Pe. Pecan. I pecan. Pe. I mean, they're good. I love pecans, but dude, like. So much. But is it, like I said, is it. Pecan, pecan, I, I, pecan. I stand by my original statement. Pecan. It's pecan. I but mean, I feel like if I wanted people to smell my breath, I would say pecan. You know. <laughs> but 
I if there's mean, any like grammar police out there, maybe you can tell us if there's an answer. I mean, I've heard some people say pecan. SpongeBob would call it peas in a can pie. <laughs> I've heard all sort of variations, but I just I don't know. I think it's pecan. You to know me, what? As, pecan. as long as you're eating them, it doesn't really matter what you call them. They're so good. They are. They're you just really reminded are. me that I have half a bag in my pantry, and I think that they're going to make an appearance at dinner on some cottage cheese with some strawberries. I feel like making pecan butter would be cool. What but about pecan, pecan butter? Well, that would probably taste very tangy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Stupid. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I think that's a. I, as long as you eat them, it doesn't matter. Toasted, what are you, candy. What are you putting? What are you putting pecan butter on? So I could do my pecan butter and jelly sandwiches, and raspberry yes. preserve sandwiches. Okay, sorry. So I put so pecan I, butter I'm on so both sorry. Sides. I thought you meant like a compound butter. You just mean like a oh. full on nut butter. Yeah, that got butter. It, got it, got it. Okay. I yes. mean that would probably be good Please. too. I if I was to do like a compound pecan butter, it would I'd probably go. Veal. Oh shoot, that does sound pretty good. I was gonna say like Marsala. over some trout or something, you know. Oh yes. Okay. Well, yes. Some Not almond butter, butter though. Butter. No, I mean you could do almond butter, but play on. I, almond I like bean. the I like the uh, pecans. Just see pecans. Now I'm gonna be saying that pecans. <laughs> Pecan. Pe pecans. Pe 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 pecans. Pecan. Nuts. There's half of the listenership is yelling right now, and the other half is like, "You right." You right. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, they're good. Yeah. So, when it comes to your fries, do you dip them in ketchup or do you pour ketchup on top? Uh, I dip them. Why not pour? Por qué no las dos, Stephen? Um, there, there is occasion. If, you, if I'm somewhere that has, like, the little paper condiment cups, those make me want to hurt myself. I, I, those infuriate me. Um, so if it's a situation like that, then I'm going, like, ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, if there's, like, a pump. Like, I'm running it underneath. Yeah. Yes. If it's, like, fries in a to-go bag or a little fast food situation and I have something to dip in, then yes. Dip. Mostly dip. I, I know feel I feel like an easy answer for anything, but I was gonna say I feel like if you're gonna pour your ketchup over the top of your fries, you're just going all in. They're gonna get cold. You, but well, that's true. Well, look, if it's like chili cheese fries, I'll put ketchup all, all over them. Well, I feel like at that point you're running before you're walking. <laughs> you know? It, it it's a good analogy in my opinion. It's just opinion. a pile of trash at that point. It's just a big heap of garbage plate. But then you get to eat them with the fork. Yes. And then you're not so dirty. Yes. I mean, it's the same way, like, if you have loaded fries, it's over the top. Yeah. So if it's loaded fries, I, I'm not doing ketchup. Well, yeah. It's like I mean, cheese, bacon. I yeah, exactly. Ranch. I went ranch. But, like, if you do, like, let's just say you, you uh, deconstruct the loaded fries. Like, you have a cheese sauce. You could put it off to the side. You could. Right? And yeah, then, but like if you do like the bacon pieces, the green onions, and all the other good stuff that goes with it, like you know what I'm saying? So I'm a dipper myself. Yeah, same. And but, also, no, I don't want every every single bite to taste exactly the same. So I'm gonna like dip a little bit in ranch and a little bit in ketchup and like a little bit in queso. And I'm like a condiment gremlin. And then a little so, bit of mayo, right? For yes. me. In honor yes. of, of me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like uh, I like fries and mayo. The Belgians, that's how they were. The Greeks, the, they the were mayo onto something. Like, that's how they do it. Yeah, I think I got a good one for you. Okay. And this one, I'll never understand. Cereal, milk first or cereal first? Cereal first. Why? Well, uh, because then that's how you know how much milk you need. I don't know. I'm saying. I have never in my life poured <laughs> milk and then poured cereal in. Now, okay. In on the 
there has been a, an occasion where I only have a finite amount of milk. So that's where I'm like, okay, if I pour too much cereal, it's going to ruin the roof of my mouth. It's not going to be enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like these fruit loops I, are going to rip the top of my pal soft palate off if I don't have enough milk. So I have to pour the milk out first to gauge how much cereal I can eat. But that's few and far between. You know, it was funny because I was talking to my mom about this yesterday. Uh, well, not like this, but we were talking about eating cereal. And she was telling me when she was pregnant with me, she would have like cereal with bananas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her, you know, to this day, my favorite cereal is still Life Cereal, Cinnamon Life Cereal. So and oh, Steve, where'd the you thing go? with that, though, is you will instantly, you know? And Steve, say it one more there. time. My computer's acting up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Cinnamon Life Cereal. We can edit that out. No, it's yeah. fine. You pour milk in there and it instantly gets soggy. You oh, know? yeah. You, you almost have to like pour it while you're eating it. <laughs> Look, but if how, you have a banana with it, that's how I feel about checks. Like, yeah. I really I love I will destroy a box of checks, but it's like you have to eat them right away. You have to have the milk on the table, like to eat them. Yeah. Or you have to stand over the counter. I haven't had checks in a while, but yes, I agree with you 100%. Like, they get soggy instantly. But my favorite part is the bottom of the bag where all like the sugar crystals are. <laughs> uh, that with some milk, I, yeah, I'll yes. I'll lose a toe for that one. Let's it's go. Cool. <laughs> and then you add a banana to that, and it's even better. Oh, like what what I used to do when I was a kid. I always loved the end of that. That uh, so any time that we had life cereal, like I would always hide it so that way I could eat it all. And uh, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no. Because you can't let your brother or your sister eat the last of the live cereal. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so I would have, we would have bananas, and I would just kind of like roll my bananas and all that sugar and whatnot, and eat it that Stop. way. Holy crap! That was that like my favorite. So ways. good. <laughs> <laughs> Where my, in the no, world were you hiding an entire box of cereal as a tiny Steven? In uh, the back of the pantry. Well, you kind of just find way places to hide them and okay. pray to God no one finds them. <laughs> Granted, they're not very well hidden, but you know, you have to uh my be mom's creative. this isn't like throwing shade or anything. My mom's pantry is tiny. She still lives uh -huh. in the same house that we basically grew up in since like kindergarten. It's tiny. Um, there's no hiding anything <laughs> in there. <laughs> Unless you just stay to your room. You're just like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like if I had shoved a box of cereal, maybe my mom can answer this. I don't know if I actually did this or not. If I had taken any food into my room and tried to hide it under my bed, she would have whipped me into next week. So, because it's parents gross. Would have just been like, well, my parents would have probably just said, just make sure you clean up after yourself. Why do you have this in here? You don't need this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm keeping it safe from you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, are we going to have a, this. is this a nuts, no nuts? No. Edges or centers? Edges. Edges, too. Crisp. And, but it's not for the reason you think. Why? It's because if they're frosted, that's where more frosting is on the corner piece. Because I, I like sugar a lot. <laughs> I feel like it would be in the center, though. Like Yeah. It, if you... So if you... It depends. If you get frosted in the pan and then lift it out, you're kind of, like, equal. But if somebody like turns them out, cuts them, and then frosts them, you kind of have that whoosh off the okay, edge. Okay, I could see that. Like it's it's extra extra frosting. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. But sure. I like I like the chewy. I'm a corner lasagna girl too. I want the chewy, crunchy. I do too. Yeah. And mac and I cheese. I don't mind a center, but it's yeah, good. I want the edges, the mac and cheese. Okay. I don't ever make like I don't. I You're just bake it. Put it all in a pot. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. I that's the way I prefer it. That's that's what I was raised with. But some everyone every now and again I'll do some nice buttered cheese breadcrumbs. I don't know. I always just like raw brownie batter too. So there's also that. <laughs> it's good as is. I can't tell you. I probably I can count on one hand the times I've made brownies from scratch as an adult. So that's not to say that I was making them from scratch as a kid either. It's just. <laughs> It's one of those things that Ghirardelli makes a really, really good brownie. Scratch out of the can, box. And you can buy a two-pack at um, Sam's. 
And yeah. then I worked at a place where we were using that mix and putting instant espresso and chili powder in it. Damn. It was all the depth, all the umami. Freaking good. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And then just pour a ganache on it. Shoot. That is making me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> what are you having for dinner tonight, Steve? Not too sure yet. Mm. Not sure yet. Do you have I, options? I have. See, I do so well when I have right, the days that I work, but on days off, like I eat just bad. Crap. So, yeah. What's so bad? We'll probably go have pizza. Oh, pizza. Sounds yeah, I mean, great. delicious pizza. Yeah. At your friend's place? A uh, different one today. We're going to try a different one. Mm, like a new recommendation. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been around new for a bit. To, new to you. New to us, yes. Last debate ice cream. Do you lick it or do you bite it? Since you didn't ask, I'm making beef burritos for dinner. All right, anyway. Where are my, where are my banners? I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you interrupted me in the middle of a bit. Shut up. All right, ice cream. What was the question? Do you lick it or do you bite it? Bite it. Do you dip your burritos in there? No, I'm kidding. Hell no, gross. <laughs> We're just on a mission to get Even sick. I have limits, okay? <laughs> it depends if it's a... if it's Oh, uh, ice cream Steven's cone. Steven's poor like, Midland internet today, I think. <laughs> I know. Usually it's you. <laughs> usually but. it's me. I got mine fixed. No offense. Um, all yeah. right. So if it's what? Okay. What does it depend on? If it's a, if it's an ice cream cone, I'll lick it. But yeah. if it's uh, scooped into a bowl, I'll bite it. Does it matter if the cone is like soft serve or regular ice I cream? I like scoops? soft serve. I like soft serve yeah. way better. Swirl, yeah. chocolate vanilla or swirl? Ooh, both. Swirl. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> yeah. I, I feel like we're not cream. really <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you said you you lick ice cream or no, you I bite, bite it. it? I bite it. Okay. I I'm afraid to bite it because I have sensitive teeth, so that oh. extreme cold is just going to make me like, you know, tense up. Life is pain, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Never more. All right. What's next? I feel like we've been debating for about an hour. And even then, it hasn't been much of a debate because That's we've okay. agreed on a lot of no, this. No, there's a lot of things that we agree on. Or we can at least see both sides, which is... That's the whole thing about food, man. Is like It's not right or wrong. I feel the next round that we we decide to do for food debates, we have to take like one person takes one side, one person takes the other, yeah. <laughs> and go. You know, I can't. If it's the wrong side, I can't defend it. I can't do it. But that's well, that's part of the fun. I, like you cutting your sandwiches in triangles, you're wrong. That's the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> this These. is feeling like this is feeling very much like a left Twix, right Twix argument. <laughs> Left Twix. Oh my gosh. Because I'm left handed. Yeah, so eating a right Twix, I, I can't do it with my right They're hand. They're the same. <laughs> so you say. They're exactly the same. Maybe that's what they want you to think. Maybe they just twist them around <laughs> so that way it looks like right and left, even though they look identical. Yeah, buddy. That's smart marketing right there. They're Indeed. smarketing. Marketing. So smart. Yeah, so Steve, fat. what are your what are your uh, so this pizza place you're going to tonight? What do you what do you think? Have you seen the menu yet? Do you let me ask you this before you're going to go to a place that you've never been to? Do you read the menu and decide before you get there? It depends on the place. Uh, if it's a pizza place like this, I'm usually like, okay, let's just get mushroom, mushroom pepperoni. We're good. Mm -hmm. But I have checked out the menu. It's a place called MD Pizza, and. I've been there once, but they have new owners, and I've heard a lot of good about it. So we're gonna find out. Nice, 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 nice. But yeah, it's it's not De Casa because De Casa is one of my favorites. Unfortunately, they're not open for dinner. So, you know that, and, and that's kind of shame on me for not going there for lunch. I had my opportunity and I blew it. <laughs> you blew it. So you ruined everything. But, you know, you also have to try different places because you're supporting uh, local businesses, A, yeah. but B, then you can compare. I mean, when I get to Raleigh, there's going to be a lot of eating. Oh, I bet. There'll be a lot of eating. 
So, so stay, explain your burritos. Stay tuned for that. Oh, my burritos are absolutely nothing special. What am I doing? I There was a stew meat on sale. Yes. Um, I dropped it into, I bought like, a, it was like a two and a half pound, um, a, or quite a large package, more than I would usually buy. I'm going to, um, I kept it thawed. I'm going to use half um, to make dog treat. And then haters going to hate. I don't even care. That's and then of you. Huh? Yeah, That's well, really nice. Yeah. Well, more on that in a minute. Um, and then the other half, uh, because I don't a pound of meat for a single gal for burritos. That's going to go a long way. Um, yeah. So I dropped like a maybe a pound and a quarter into the crock pot this morning with a taco ranch packet. Not taco, not ranch, but they make it together. Taco ranch um, and a can of Rotel, and I'll drain everything really good and shred it up, and then I'll. I'll drop a guaji, a frozen guajillo chili into the into the juice and burr mix it, and then it's gonna go into um, burritos and into the air fryer. So it's kind of like you're making birria to a certain pretty, extent. Pretty much, without all the, I didn't do any of the legwork with like the bay leaf and the onion and the. So what you're saying is you're business. working smarter, not harder. I have to. She be lazy. She be lazy sometimes. Otherwise, um, one is working smarter. So the other part, the dog treats, right? I do find the meat that's on sale. And I braise it down in water because, you know, dogs can't have onions. They can't have garlic. Mm -hmm. um, I will blend the entire thing. So it's just like a very thick, shreddy meat broth, for lack of a better word. I put fiber powder in it um, and like vitamin supplements because my dogs won't. They like treats. They don't like like med medicinal treats, if that makes sense, like. There's all sort of things out there for your dogs. They're like supposed to make them poop better and like supposed to make their coat shiny. And they can smell that stuff a mile away. They're not, they want real treat. They want like a milk bone. Yeah. That's whatever. So I put that stuff into this kind of like, you know, super thick meat, meaty broth. And then uh -huh. I, I freeze it into ice cube trays and I use a milk bone as the handle for it's like a little popsicle. Nice. So I get a, I get a lot of bang for my buck with that. And I know exactly what's going in it, and it doesn't cost a ton. So, man, it's nifty. I bet your dogs love you. They love me. My God, they almost killed me when I came in the door last night, early this morning. It was about twelve thirty. Thank you, airplane delays. Right. So, um, yes, they immediately knew. I when I stepped out of the Uber, they were like, I could hear them going crazy in the house. I thought they were going to take out one of my eyes. It was. <laughs> So it's nice to be loved. It's nice to be loved. Yes, so, definitely. It's nice to be loved. And then about 30 minutes after that, they were like, let's go to sleep. Like, Where have you been? Basically. You're back. I'm happy. You're I'm back. I'm to. happy. It's time for bed. Thank you. You were yes. late. <laughs> exactly. And then this morning, we were like, they were like, we love you. And now feed us and walk us. I was like, okay, great. Yeah. That's what settle, it's settle back in just like nothing ever happened. Exactly. Feed me walk. It's hey, called Steve. routine. Steve, enjoy that pizza, man. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. You enjoy your burritos. You got to tell me all about it next week. Definitely. We got to go, Steve. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap for today. Until the next episode of the Food for Thought cast, make good food, eat good food, share it, and be kind to one another. Thanks so much for listening today. You are part of what makes us special, and we are so glad you joined us. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and leave a review. Just like food, delicious podcasts are better when you share them with others. Come back for seconds wherever podcasts are served, and we'll catch you in the next episode of the Food for Thought cast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Food for Thoughtcast or at www.foodforthoughtcast.com where you can link to all podcast players or you can send us an email at foodforthoughtcmc at gmail.com.